on that, um, welcome to our webinar today. So transforming construction in NetSuite um, with NetSuite's construction module with full clarity. Really excited to be able to share what we've got to offer you today off the back of our build last week, uh, which was fantastic. So I know that quite a few people couldn't attend today. So we do have a recording of this webinar that we that we can share for you. Uh, so, so kicking it off, um, we'll be running into the introductions and quite a few, few of you would have met both of us on the stand last week, even though it was chilly as in Auckland. Myself, Paula from Anexa. Um, I've been with the team now coming up, gosh, 10 years next year, as crazy as it sounds, based in Melbourne originally, they're now back here in New Zealand. Um, BDM, so coming in and sort of looking at your business, seeing how we can streamline processes and, and really get efficiency um, and better bottom line, basically. And we're having some great success in the construction building industry here in New Zealand. I'm based here now in New Zealand, uh, and Paul and I have sort of um, married up to be able to look at what we've got, to, what we can deliver for your business. Uh, so look, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Paul for a quick intro. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paula. Yep, uh, hopefully uh, you all had a good time at uh, the Build Expo. We certainly did. Uh, my name's Paul Beatty. I'm the Global Director for Sales and Partnerships for Full Clarity. Uh, my history is I've been involved with ERP for coming up 30 years now. Originally, it was a big Sage products. And for the last 12 years, uh, I ran a very large NetSuite partner in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Last year, I moved to the Sweet App world and uh, started with Full Clarity, which I'll talk about in more detail uh, in a moment. Great. Thanks, Paul. So just um, to set the scene for what we're going to cover off on today for you is obviously we've done point one, going into point two. So we're going to give you a really good overview of the construction module for NetSuite, at NetSuite as Paul said, Full Clarity. Then we're going to deep dive into the functionality of what that can bring to your business. It might not be the now, it might be a little bit later, because I know we've got quite a few people that aren't on NetSuite in this webinar. Um, and then Paul is going to go through and show you some of those transactions reporting and all the real the fruits of the product, shall I say. And then we're going to Q&A. So, what we do have at um, on your screen, you'll see there's a, a chat box down the side. So we're going to keep all those questions till the end of the session, just so we've got a good flow and we can really get through the content. Um, and of course, if we don't get through all of the content that you want to see, we will deep dive and get into like discovery sessions, et cetera. This is just to give you a little bit of a taste test on, on what is on offer. Um, it is a, it's a really, really good product, uh, and um, we believe that it, it's, it's creating a bit of a storm, especially here in New Zealand, post the Build Expo, so really excited. So just a real quick snapshot. Um, I know a lot of you on the call are already with, with the Oracle NetSuite, but for those of you that are not, NetSuite is a, it's a cloud product. So what does that mean? It means that you don't need any servers, you don't need to log in from a server as such. As long as you've got the internet, you've got access to your business. You could be lying on the beach in, in the Bahamas, for example, where you're a sea level or whatever. So, and that encumbers everything that you plug into the product, okay? So um, at its core, it's got all of the finance functions, which is a sweet spot for the product, right through to CRM, inventory management, manufacturing, projects, payroll, whatever you need it to do. And Paul's going to be going through, as he said before, the sweet app of Full Clarity. Everything's sweet in NetSuite, so it's a bit of a pun in, in, the, in the world of NetSuite. Uh, and, and basically, that's an enhancement of uh, what the functionality of the core product can do, which is very, very cool. So I, without further ado, I'm going to move forward and throw it over to Paul. So he's going to get into those sort of nuts and bolts, tell you about full clarity, a little bit about the sweat app um, and where it's originated from and why. And then he's going to jump into the real live version and, and give you a taste test. Um, so you get excited and, and make sure that um, you've, you've got those questions ready to go and we'll answer those at the end of the session. Thanks, Paul. 
Thank you, Paula. So full clarity uh, came from the construction industry. So Andrew and John, whose pictures you see on the top right up there, uh, they're part of the Cogden family who in the 70s, their father started Vicont Homes. And that grew to be one of the largest home builders uh, in Victoria. You'll see uh, one of their lovely single unit dwellings there from the 70s. Uh, they grew and grew and grew that company. Andrew and John ran around as little children, uh, probably sticking their fingers where they didn't belong on building sites until it became time for them to take over the company. When they took over the company, by this stage, Andrew was a chartered accountant. He had been working for Deloitte over in London. He came back uh, to, with John, take over the business. Um, part of what they did when they uh, took over Viscount Homes was that they launched a uh, dispute and resolution consultancy called BuildSpec. And uh, you may have uh, come across them, particularly in Australia. They're one of the top tiers for that. In fact, John is the current president of the BuildSpec Dispute Practitioners Society. Why I'm giving this background is to really give you an idea that the software that we've built as full clarity was built for the construction industry by the construction industry. And they are still deeply involved in that industry. They purchased NetSuite maybe uh, eight or nine years ago and absolutely loved it. It produced everything that they needed except for the construction specific functionality. Now how NetSuite's grown so, so fast and become one of the largest multi-tenancy ERP systems in the world is by allowing access uh, to the system for what's called Suite App Developers or SDN Partners solution developer network to write code on the base product. Andrew had run a few software companies while he was in London and decided that this would be a really good future direction for their group of businesses that the Cogman family ran. In 2016, they spun up Full Clarity to build construction specific functionality on that platform. So what does it take to become a suite app, to become a module within the NetSuite world. It isn't easy. First off, there's three tiers. We're the top tier. Full Clarity is the top tier and that we have written on the platform. This means that we have to go through very stringent code-based reviews and we have to ensure that every six months we're upgrading the product as NetSuite is upgraded. There's that badge on the right took about two years for us to, to achieve where it says built for Oracle NetSuite. There's various other partners where they just integrate and they have a system uh, out that they write a API integration to. That's not full clarity. When I go through the demo, you'll see that we are written in the system. In fact, you can't even tell when you're in full clarity or when you're in NetSuite. And that means that we are able to provide real time one source of the truth information with no limits because we're based on NetSuite's multi tenanted platform. So unlimited projects, unlimited data reporting, everything real time. Because we come from the construction background and because Andrew was a, uh, is a qualified accountant, John has the construction experience, between them, we have written this construction specific accounting software, which has really powerful job costing and forecasting, plus project management capabilities. It is our sole focus. It's all we do. We don't try to sell 16 other products. We do one thing and we do it right at full clarity. And internationally, uh, an actual uh, out of interest, um, as Paula says, we are growing in Australia, New Zealand, and although we're based in Melbourne, most of our customers are actually in the United States where it has been picked up by NetSuite Direct uh, salespeople and solution consultants and is going basically like, like hot scones all through America at the moment uh, to the point where I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up with uh, my, my school base over there and, and employing and employing and employing. Uh, it has become the go-to suite app for the construction and fit out industry. So what features and functionality does Full Clarity offer? 
So up there is a, is, a, is a list of functionality, which I will run through in a moment. But I keep using the word construction. I just really want to put it out there that it is not just construction that we are talking about. I've got customers in America in particular who are putting in commercial swimming pools, who are putting in commercial kitchens. So we call them fit out. They're fitting out within a, in a company. We've got companies that are doing civil contracting. We've got customers who are putting in solar farms, large scale solar farms, and now they're about to use full clarity to put in domestic uh, solar panels on roofs. Uh, Habitat for Humanity is using full clarity to build uh, houses in um, the Seattle area, and that is now expanding out to other habitats for humanities. Uh, we, use, of course, do land development, and I mean, at its heart, it's construction. Building homes, building buildings. That's where it started, but all those other things I mentioned, uh, full clarity can manage. So up the top there, across the top, we're talking about Project 360 visualization, what I mentioned just earlier. Real-time information at your fingertips, presented to the screen, exported to Excel, printed out in reports. As long as that data is there, and particularly those of you who already use NetSuite will understand, if that data is there, we can present that information. We run contract management. Uh, project budgeting and forecasting is, of course, one of the most important uh, features of Full Clarity, as is the job cost and capability. We can build estimates and turn them into proposals. We can also import estimates if you have your own estimation tool that you don't want to uh, get rid of. Uh, we, of course, automate the purchasing. If we have a budget that is 500 lines long, 5,000 lines long, uh, we need to automate that purchasing uh, when you need that product purchased. And when I say purchasing, I'm not just talking items or material, if you are purchasing physical things, also subcontractors. Uh, we can do bid management with the subcontractors, but also with materials. That's a portal that will allow people to uh, provide a quote uh, to you. Uh, we do gain scheduling on the project management side. Um, of course, we do change order management or variations. Uh, we run through a claim management process for the invoicing. Uh, once it's ticked off, then the invoice is created. Uh, if you're doing progress billing, we can produce a schedule of values and a percentage complete. We have multiple ways of, of billing. Uh, that means uh, we, you know, we can draw down uh, from banks or financial institutions. We can do stage or milestone billing. We can do progress. We can do time materials. Uh, retainage, uh, which uh, is often called retentions in this part of the world on both the AR and AP side, if, uh, if you uh, require that. Revenue recognition and also WIP reporting. All of that built on the NetSuite platform and where possible using NetSuite functionality. The idea being you never need to leave NetSuite once you've got the full clarity construction module um, available. Okay. And with that, Paula, is there anything you wanted to add to that before I ran into a demo? No, perfect. No, no, that's great, Paul. Really, really good. And of course, I know we've got quite a few people on the call today that haven't got NetSuite, okay? So you want to be able to walk before you can crawl, before you can run. Uh, so the functionality of NetSuite, yes, does have projects, but not in the devil of the detail of what Full Clarity is going to be showing you today. So, and, and you'll see this in the demonstration coming up shortly. If you're at that stage, we've got the sort of spaghetti of systems where you want to be able to do what you do now, you don't want to be going backwards and you want to jump into NetSuite and plug in Full Clarity at the same time or tick a box, I should say, because there's no integration. You can do that. So it's, there's no problems whatsoever. So Paul's just going to go through a quick um, 101 on NetSuite, just around the UI and the real cool sort of um, functionality that it, that it can do. And then he's going to dive into his product. So questions, pop them in the chat box to the right so that we can answer those. And of course, if, you, if you're like, wow, this product's for me, I need to know more, then we'll go into the, the devil of the detail. Uh, so um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you, Paul, all yours. Thank you. So uh, as Paul has uh, mentioned, uh, the first couple of minutes, I'll just be spending in the dashboard talking about 
NetSuite uh, visualization. The important thing to remember is that the dashboards are an integral part. Back in the old days when I started, they were screen scrapes that were just put on and really tried to make to look good. The whole point of NetSuite is that you access, your users access all the information that they need via the dashboard. There's another concept that we like to bring in to NetSuite and it's called managing by exception. The thing with dashboards is you can have a lot of information there and that real estate is prime. So you've really got to think about what information is important for your users to see. With that, we have a lot of roles in NetSuite. Sales roles, AR role, AP role, CRM, project manager, manufacturing manager, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So part of the dashboard that you see will depend on your role. And when you implement NetSuite, one of the most important things we talk to the NetSuite champion, i.e. the person on your side who's most involved, is I've got to get the dashboards aimed at the people that are using it. That also means their permissions, uh, what they can see and do. And therefore, when you come down to things like shortcuts down here, and you'll see this is my project screen, I'm talking about subcontractors. I want to see all projects, uh, all costs. I want to run some reports. And that's sitting in my shortcuts here. I don't need to go and run through the reports tabs to run that. They are part of the shortcut. Reminders, managing by exception. So letting me know that I've got some awarded projects here. I've got some pending projects. Now, what are those reminders? It depends on yourself and the user, what, needs, what they need to be reminded of. If they're a supervisor and they need to be, have an expense report that they need to approve of a junior, or there's a delegated financial authority workflow that's been put in. And as um, Paula said, one of the C-suite is sitting in Barbados and they need to approve a $100,000 purchase order, it will turn up in their reminders here. They also be emailed, but they just click on these and go, right, what are the purchase orders, supplier bills, or in this case, projects that I need to approve. The idea being is that everything is sitting on that dashboard. And you don't want to see the 200 uh, projects that are there, just the things that are important to that user managing by exception. Uh, in the dashboard, we can go through and set up any of the standard uh, KPIs, and NetSuite comes with a couple of hundred of KPIs that you can add into your uh, dashboard, or you can add custom KPIs. I, these are what, based on saved searches, or another terminology, queries, that bring information to the screen that you have designed, and they are really, really simple. A NetSuite champion on your side, they will, they'll pick these things up in 10, 15 minutes and be able to put the information and place them where you need them to be. Uh, of course, you can move things around. If I want things, projects in flight to be in there, I can move it. I'm gonna move that back now. I can move this. Everything here, it's blue, you can drill down. I'm gonna drill down because I want to see uh, retainage uh, receivable on all my projects is 8,500. Let's click in and run the report and I can see all the projects where retainage is received. Now, if you're a salesperson, that's of no interest to you, so you'll never see that report. Uh, but certainly other people within your organization will find it very, very inf uh, useful information. Feed into cash flow, start chasing up that money. We can personalize by putting new KPI meters, searches, portlets, uh, anything that we want on the dashboard. Very simple to customize. I mean, I, I've been using NetSuite for coming up 12 years now, and it is by far the most simplest ERP system to extract data and to visualize that, that I've found. And that's why I'm staying in this uh, ecosystem. So let's go and have a little look at uh, what full clarity brings to NetSuite. So I'm going to go and uh, look at a job. Free rain solar farm here, commercial solar. So we're looking at a high level of information in the dashboard. Now we've drilled down a level to the project record, but it's still showing us high level information. 
if I come down here, I can see an overview of my financial information. What the total contract is, the baseline was just under $100,000, managed a million dollars of change orders. So you're now coming up to 1.1 um, million revised contract. Here's the actual invoicing. Here's the projected invoicing. And the magic here is the forecasted invoicing. And when that forecast, we take snapshots. So you can constantly be comparing what's happening to your margin as you go through. And then some more information, how much revenue has come in and what the costs are and any POs that are pending approval that have not been received yet, bills received with PO, just numbers at your fingertips. So you can get a snapshot. As I said, out on the dashboard, you would have all that listed down and you can see it in one big long list. Here I'm in the project and I'm just looking at the summary for this project. Now I want to go a little bit deeper. I'm going to go look at a report here and I'm going to, well, I'm going to run two reports in fact. Now one of the neat things about NetSuite is of course you can open things in new tabs or new windows and everyone should have two if not three screens when they're running NetSuite. So I've just run two reports. The big thing to really think about is that all this information that you're seeing is nothing more than transactional information that has been summarized up into these reports. Because we're built within NetSuite, every transaction that has a report number on it and a cost category on it down here is going to turn up in this report. I can see, and across the top here, well, what are these columns across the top? These are columns that we think people in our experience will want to see. But we certainly have customers that say, I would like to see this information. I'd like to see this column. That's fine. Add that column in. We'll help you create some um, custom calculations and you can have the report as you're used to as you need to see it. Coming down the left here, what are the expenses? What are the cost categories or cost codes for this? Again, that's up to you. I'm going to go into my menu structure now and have a look at cost centers. Everybody, everybody, unless they're using some standard in America, the AIA or the CIS codes, has their own special flavor of how they want to segment their data. And with that, I can go down and I'm looking at a, a cost center here that we've imported up. And this is just for building and developers. And you can use our ones if you like, um, but everyone usually just imports their own cost centers. It's one of the things we really focus on in the workshops is what is your cost structure? Because we can only report that to you. We can only segment if that cost structure is on every transaction so that we can, we can report it up to here. Um, I'll give you another example, Rockwell Building Systems. It's, a, uh, it's actually a customer in America. Look how simple theirs is. Very, very simple. Some of those others were hundreds of rows long. They said no. We're actually okay. We just need it pretty simple. However, their stage is very different. I bring all that up basically to say whatever job cost report you want, we can create as long as we understand the segmentation, as long as really you understand the segmentation and what you're really after. Everything here, of course, can be drilled down onto. So if I click onto uh, this, I'm going to go into the transactions that make up that number. From there, I can then drill down and see if they've been received. Uh, there's in fact, this is the bill for this one. And you'll see here on a, those NetSuite users, it's just a normal bill, it's a NetSuite bill, but we have put in extra custom columns here to say what retainage or retention is, is due, 0% on this one, and what job and what line or row on that job budget are we required. Now, I've just used the word budget or row. Time we went and had a look at that. As we've gone down two levels, we've looked at report, we've looked at the dashboards, we've looked at reports. Now let's drop right down and go into the estimate that this was built on. Before I go in and show the budget, I, I split this up by two ways. I talk estimates and I talk budgets. An estimate is, of course, you just putting all those numbers together. In this particular job, there's one, two, three, four estimates and two variations have come through. I'm going to click through and have a look at this initial estimate. 
when this initial estimate was put together, it was just working out what information you know for you to put your proposal together. It's not locked down, but interestingly, you can put cost against it. Because it's actually gone to contract, it's now got padlocks on, which means you can't change it. If you want to change this, it's going to be a variation. If it goes over, then your margin's reduced. You want that reported to you so you can see the differences. You can see what's happening here. Now, this can be 500, 5,000 rows long. It can be very, very complex. So of course, we bring it up to, you guessed it, cost codes or cost categories. And then we can drill down and see what information is, is making up that information. And that can be multiple materials. When I'm creating an estimate, uh, of course, there's templates. We can import an estimate into the system if you've got it sitting in, a, in an external system and you want to carry on with that. Uh, but the concept is that once this, this estimate is here and it's locked, that is the baseline budget. Anything else on that is a forecast that then moves forward for the duration of the project. So we've gone three levels. And now once we're in the um, once we are in the budget side of things, I mean of course that's a very lot of a uh, lot of information to actually see. And then we get even more complex because we go and collect them up. The idea is that we actually don't want 5,000 row estimates. We want short estimates of and think of a house build, there's your roof, there's 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 the, the flooring, there's the walls, and you collect them together to make one big one. And so we pull together collection estimates. What does a collection estimate look like? It is the sum total of lots and lots of small estimates that then become a budget. You go to contract on, you sign things. If it's a progress billing, you're going to then uh, pay by uh, progress claim against that. So if I go and have a look at the collection view here now, this review you've got to think of as an Excel spreadsheet. It is impossible to fit on one page. But if I go across here, I've got all the information that I need at a detailed level now. I can then drop down to the original estimate. I can drop into the original purchase orders uh, that were created for this. If I want to go create a purchase order for this, I right click on this and I go to create order. As I mentioned earlier, we try to automate the purchase order process. We use NetSuite standard processes to do that. So what vendor do I want? The preferred vendor's vSUN. I select that and it goes out and creates a suggested purchase order to vSUN, not the purchase order, because vSUN may be the preferred on many, many purchase orders. Uh, uh, many items rather. And you might not want to purchase them all at once. So you might just click that one and I want to purchase that one, I want to purchase that one. The address of course will be not your address, it will be the site address to send these items to. And then once that is created, it goes and creates a purchase order, which is where I was before with the customer and the project reference there. And that is now a committed order that's going to appear on all those reports. It's going to appear in the summaries and you can start now managing your business. What else can I have a look at in this project here? I can uh, go through, oh, for those of you of NetSuite, I've just clicked into the uh, customer record. This all sits on the customer record, so you can see all the projects that are that are sitting on that uh, customer. Let's go through and look at a contract. So down here on the contract, you can see that one for this particular contract, I'm in stages, I've got milestones it's a milestone based contract. Uh, they will be invoiced. I've created claims for all of these. Now, I'm not going to run through a transaction. I don't have time to run through a transaction in an overview demonstration. 
But if you do want a detailed demonstration where I run through things like that, happy to provide it. In fact, I'll probably even put your own cost categories in so you can start seeing your own data or your own reporting running through the system. I've got three claims here that have now due on, that are now due. And if I go to variations, there's been two variations that have been created and added to the, um, the original budget to create a new budget. What does that look like? And again, I know I'm clicking around and showing a lot of information here, but that is just the nature. Every business, construction business that I've talked to, they see and look at things in such a variety of ways. We've had to design the system to show people things in different ways. Now, if I go along here, oh, I'm very sorry. Let me pop out here for a minute. I've already shown you that one. I wanted to show you this one. This information now is showing even more information on that, as I said, think of it in an Excel spreadsheet, where we can see now the base estimate that was ordered. We can see the change orders that have come through and the combined estimate. The whole thing building up and up and up and up, um, which is why, you know, it's only really certain people are going to be looking at this level to see what was happening with the change orders and the combined estimates. But it's where the C-suite or the supervisors go to also, when they look at those job cost reports and something looks odd, the margin's down, they can come in and see this detailed, detailed information and click down to any of these to see what has happened, why are we, uh, why are we over here? So I very quickly showed you how cost transactions, we put a cost transaction against the row on the budget. We don't need to put it against the row if you don't have a purchase order process system and instead just uh, create supplier bills. As long as the project name is on there, it will come back. It's just we can't then detail down and drill down at a row level, which is, of course, we're trying to show our customers as much information as possible. And I've shown you the revenue side where we've created a claim and a variation. Let's just run through some of these tabs here to show what else is in the system. So Full Clarity has created its own document management system separate from NetSuites. This is because construction customers require a lot more documentation to be kept than the standard NetSuite customer who's in manufacturing or warehouse distribution. Uh, our, uh, it works the same with a drag or drop up here to load information in. Um, but it sits on Amazon Web Services rather than the Oracle data centers. And our storage, we sell very, very cheaply uh, with a much higher um, file storage limit, simply because that's what our customers require. But the idea is you're going to have all the, all the documentations you want sitting in the system. Click through a few here. It's just what you would expect in the system. The nice thing about what this does though as well is that it informs the bid request process. So if I go to this bid or this request for quote and I go and have a look at uh, one of these, you'll see it has been, four of these files have been made available to vendors uh, to be able to base their quote on. So with our bid request process, no longer are you having to send emails out to people. What goes out is one email that says, we would like you to bid, come to this portal, and you'll see all the information that you require. What does that portal look like? Well, let's go and have a look at uh, the framing material and labor. And I'm gonna go through to the vendor portal here. What would normally happen, I'm going through via NetSuite, but what would normally happen is that this would be on the email to say, we would like you to bid, information about the bid, the user instructions, whatever instructions uh, you require. Um, and then down here, there's the 
is the information that you need to give them. The same information that was dragged into NetSuite, but you have chosen that this particular file you want to share for this particular vendor. And then the people can either decline the opportunity for whatever reason they want, or they can upload the bid. And that can be on multiple uh, rows on here. You'll see here we are asking for bids on two rows on the estimate. If uh, what we can also see is what files. So they have sent the proposal to us. They've dragged it into the portal and that is now sitting in NetSuite for you to decide what you want to do with it. If I go back to the bid process, You'll see that there's been emails been sent to many people. One's been uh, received, two have been received, one's been accepted, which means that you've actually said, I like this one, I plan to use this one. It doesn't mean documents have gone out, it just means I plan to, it's going to be one of the ones I want to talk about, hasn't, and one company has declined to bid. But there's all the companies here. Now, what we also do with these companies is you don't want to be listing down all the companies and having to select them. So what we've put on the vendor record, or the subcontract record is, here's all the electricians. Perhaps there's all the electricians within a state or within a geographic difference um, uh, location. So that when you do create a bid to a or an piece of say electrical work, it will uh, be only bring in automatically those vendors in that area that are electricians. You can then add more manually, you can delete any, but we try to automate it um, as much as possible. Okay, I'm going back to the project now, and we'll just run across through those tabs a little bit further. So we've got documents, uh, we've got the bid management process here. We have a timeline in the system. So the timeline uh, is, is what you'd expect in a Gantt uh, format. So what we can see here is going across this way, we have lots and lots of information on the forecast start and end date. Of course, what happens is we have a template that says to do this particular bit of work, it takes 100 days based on these time segments. You put a date start date in, you put a calendar in, and so in my calendar, here's the US holidays calendar, but it could be Australia holiday calendar. And then that will feed out, and for this one across three years, you'll notice uh, that, that bid. I've clicked on one and I've now drilled down into the scan. Just going to zoom fit max uh, to bring it back a little bit. Um, and if I want to drill down even further, I can draw right down into this sort of level here. If I want to move things, of course, I can just drag and drop, and it's going to come and say there are six dependent tasks that should need to be updated. Shall I move them? If I put yes, everything's going to move. This is yeah, you know, standard Gantt chart capability so that you can work through um, what 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 you need to do. Uh, what else do we have down here? If we go across, um, we can see we can see you know actual work, target work, actual effort, and all this feeds into if you're doing a progress bill, for example, what percentage uh, shall you pay your subcontractor if you're using subcontractors? If I go back to uh, my project now and I'll go along to the next tab. And we have logs. So in the logs, we can do a weekly report, we can do a daily log. If you want uh, certain people to do a daily log, they can take photos and drag those photos into the daily log. Um, you know, who was on site, what happened, um, some people use it to, you know, to, to work through and then change the Gantt chart. It, again, it really depends on how you operate your business. Uh, the weekly report will normally be saying, besides a summary of the report, what percentage is complete for each of the trades? 
and uh, therefore, you know, uh, how, how far are we through the project? Safety checklist. Um, safety checklist can be worked on for one person, a safety officer on the site, or it might be multiple people, the truck drivers, the crane drivers, uh, anyone else there that needs to do a particular health and safety checklist, you choose what health and safety checklist, what questions need to be asked, and most importantly, what, what if there's a no asked means that it's tools down, everyone off the site, or hey, a safety post has fallen down, get some blue tack, or someone's used the bandage out of the first aid, it's not tools down, but it needs to be replaced. It needs to be remarked this happened, and it needs to be replaced. Of course, uh, if you do retentions, uh, we're going to be able to show you what your retentions and your retainage is. Now, for those of you who already have NetSuite, you already know the next two. Everything is a related record in here, so you can go through and see all the transactions. You don't normally because you're seeing these on reports, but of course, all the transactions are sitting in the system from opportunity, as in Salesforce automation down, till some revenues come in they are all sitting on the same system. Okay, with that, um, that's all I really wanted to uh, show you today. It's a very brief overview of full clarity. For those of you who have NetSuite, you'll see that the forms that I use, the fields that I used, look identical to the NetSuite ones, so that it's not a big learning exercise for people. If you're new to NetSuite, you wouldn't have even known the difference. And if you decide to Im implement NetSuite and Full Clarity at the same time, for your users, they don't even know they're in different systems. It is the same system, the same, uh, there's no clicking in and out. It just all looks like it's another module sitting on NetSuite. What I haven't covered today, which I'm happy to cover in more detail, is revenue recognition or work in progress. But that is a, a, a bigger question that I really need to delve into and to, uh, in, into more detail. Um, with that, Paula, is there anything that I've missed or anything that you'd like me to have shown um, outside of, of that overview? No, no, that's great, Paul. No, no excellent. And I know that um, we've got a f quite a few people on the call that haven't used NetSuite before. So it's all going to be like, well, how does this all pull? together and then obviously the back end of all of this is the core NetSuite database so all that information is being pulled from there however we have got a question that's come through what if we're using a separate tool already that we want want to keep using can we integrate it into NetSuite with full clarity uh, the question really is if it has an API or not NetSuite has open APIs, uh, which Full Clarity adheres to. If your system uh, has an API, then yes, it can be integrated into NetSuite. And just as an aside, you know, a lot of our customers, particularly in America, love Procore. Procore works really well on some of the project side, and, and it's an industry standard, but works averagely, let's say, on the financial side. So we've written integration between Procore and NetSuite so you can get the best of both worlds. For those customers who their project managers won't switch over to NetSuite's Gantt charting or full cloud's Gantt charting and project management capability, there's no reason we can't write that integration for other systems. Cool, excellent. So the other question that's come through is existing NetSuite you, um, user over the business, how long does it take to implement full clarity and what does it look like from a resourcing perspective on that business? So how long it takes to implement full clarity? At a, at a base level, configuring it is under a month. The complexity comes with training your users to change over to a different way of doing things. Uh, if you are running four projects at one stage, which some of our customers are for big projects, that's a lot easier than if you're running 200 projects. So therefore, it might be a couple of months after that, while the uploading of all that data and the training of a mass number of people 
uh, is required. But the actual configuration, once that we've had the workshop to work out what your reporting requirements are, what your processes are, um, it's pretty quick to, to set up. The resourcing requirement, again, depends on how big you are, but at the very, very least, I mentioned earlier about a NetSuite champion. The best way that these systems go in is that if you have an expert person on your side who understands your business and also understands NetSuite, if we can have that person for that month or two months full time, that means that you're going to get a much better pro uh, product because it's not just us synthesizing your requirements, it's someone on your side is helping us design your end solution. And that is preferable to us because you get a better solution, we get a happier customer, and it's preferable to you because you have someone who really deeply understands the decisions of the architecture and why they were made. Do you need to do that? No, we can do most of the heavy lifting ourselves, but just I've been doing this for so long, I've found the best systems are if we can have at least one person uh, full time during the implementation, then that person carries on, does the first level support and also helps optimize the system. Because remember, with an ERP like NetSuite, it's never finished. There's always more optimizations, more efficiencies to be gained. Someone out on the side using Excel spreadsheets still, or you get a new project and someone decides, hey, I'll just wrap up a new spreadsheet because it doesn't quite fit the way that the estimates work in full clarity. You need someone there to jump on them and go, no, no, we can make a few changes and uh, we can put that into full clarity. So you should always have that person anyway in, in, in my recommendation. Yeah, excellent. That no, makes sense, Make, makes total sense. No, no, that's great. And I know that was a full focus on, on at a high level of what full clarity offers um, as an extension of NetSuite. No, so, so that's fantastic. And of course, everyone, um, we can't get, oh, we've actually, we, we've hit our time limit and we can't get through all the questions, but we do have those and we will come back to you. Uh, and if we needed to set up further sort of deeper dive demonstrations, which I know we would need to do, we will do so. So um, no, Thanks, Paul. That, that was great. I, I learned a lot. Um, and yeah, yeah, it, it certainly is, is a great product. And without the backing of NetSuite there, it wouldn't be there, right? So um, the big draw card is um, it's built on that Oracle product of NetSuite, which is um, going places. It's really exciting. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Lovely. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon.